Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You are responsible for your life. You and only you. Only you. We're going to talk about what this means. It's good news, bad news. <laughs> and the reason I feel like we have to talk about it is that so few people seem to understand this, and indeed we are kind of programmed, brainwashed, whatever you want to call it, uh, into trying to give away our responsibility for life, right? Give it to others, give it to experts, give it to the government, give it to other people. So we'll talk about what this means. Just letting everybody join. Hello. We have members only chat on at the moment. Ruslan and Elena, nice to see you. And Vladislav as well. So you are responsible for your own life. What does this mean? It means that no one's going to save you. That... If you try to rely on other people, if you think that other people are responsible for different parts of your life, you're gonna, you lose your power and typically you suffer. And typically, often, frequently, you will get used <laughs> and you will get bad results, bad consequences. But Brave New World, uh, school systems, the media, all the modern world, modern government want to take responsibility away from you. See, it's kind of a trade-off. I was just watching uh, last night a quite good live stream from Owen Benjamin where he talked about this a bit. He talked about this in terms of food where that, you know, most people give away their responsibility for food because he he used to he's a comedian he used to live in los angeles and be in all that hollywood stuff and he moved out to the countryside and he started growing his own food he has goats and chickens and he was talking about how he you know he has to kill the chickens sometimes and how it's he doesn't like doing it of course he, he doesn't like it it's it's hard to do but how you know this, it's his responsibility to do this, right? That because he does this, because he has a farm, he now understands exactly where food comes from and what is required for that food. He has extremely healthy food, better than organic. He's raising all his own food, plants and animals, both. Uh, and, but there's some pain that goes with it. The responsibility, right? Responsibility means like you are the master of your life, right? You decide that, you know, you, you make the decisions and you take the actions and it's your responsibility, right? It's it's up to you and no one else. And so Owen was talking about how, you know, so many people, they give away responsibility for their food. They just go to the grocery store or they go to restaurants and then they complain that the quality of the food's bad well, that's the price. That's the price of giving away your responsibility, right? That's the price by letting other people make your food for you. On one hand, it's convenient. On one hand, you gain, right, convenience, ease. You don't have to kill chickens, <laughs> for example. Uh, you don't have to grow plants. You don't have to deal with any of that stuff. But there's a price. There's always a price when you give away your responsibility. So anyway, it was a good live stream. Very good. Check it out. Unauthorized.tv. I think they should have it there, uh, up there soon, the recording. But, you know, this is true in all areas of life. 
all areas of life. The more you give away your responsibility in different parts of your life, the weaker you become. And indeed, really, the less happy you become. Now, I don't grow all my own food either, right? So, I mean, we, we all make this deal sometimes. It's hard to do everything for yourself, but, but still, ultimately, finally, it's our responsibility. And this is connected, of course, to yesterday's show, because what so many people do is they give away their responsibility to teach their children, because it is your responsibility to educate your children. No one else's. No one else's. No one else is responsible for your children's education. And if you give away that responsibility, if you try to get the government to do it or a private school to do it or someone else to do it, well, then you're going to suffer some bad results. Your kids are going to learn a lot of things you probably don't want them to learn. They're going to learn a lot of things that are not true. They're going to be socially programmed. Uh, anyway, all the bad things that go along with that. So, and then people complain about it, but there's, it's, there's an easy solution. Just take responsibility. That's the, that's the solution, is take responsibility for your children's education. Take responsibility and stop wanting other people to do it for you. Do, it, do whatever you need to do so that you can be responsible for your children's education, and then they're going to get a great education, and you're going to have a great family, a, very, a much stronger, healthier, happier family. Now, this is also true in the area of health and, uh, you know, health care, right? This is another one where people think, oh, yeah, the government, we should have free health care. And uh, but there's a problem with that. If you if you have so-called free health care, which is not free, it's you pay a huge amount of taxes for that. Um, guess what? Now you're a slave to the government system. And I'm telling you, it's not a good system. It's controlled by the drug companies. And so you are giving away responsibility for your health if you do that. The solution is to take responsibility for your health, right? And like, for example, if you're worried about viruses, pneumonia, the current craziness, there are some easy things you can do if you just do some research about this and you know, take a few months, take a few years to start learning about, of course, you know, good diet and exercise, but also just about natural healing, because there's so many ways, so many powerful methods of natural healing that are not expensive. So you don't have to go, you don't have to worry about going to a hospital and don't, you don't have to worry about if they're going to give you a drug that's going to kill you or put you on a ventilator that's going to kill you, or you're going to go there and it's, full of sick people <laughs> and you're going to get worse or whatever. Okay. Um, like, so here's an example. This is a nice little book. It's called Natural Healing That Works. Doctor Yourself is the title. Doctor Yourself. Natural Healing That Works. This is just one example. Okay. There are many, 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 many books like this. Many, many uh, people who teach things like this. Now, let me pull up my screen. I'll show you if you're watching on video. But he talks about pneumonia, which is what's killing, supposedly, killing people now. And it definitely kills, you know, people anyway with just the normal flu. People who are usually they're old or they have other problems and then they get the flu and then they get pneumonia, which is when the lungs start filling up with water. And that's what actually kills them. And so guess what? There, there are some very natural solutions to this, especially if you use them as soon as the problem starts instead don't wait too long and one of them is super high doses of vitamin c and so the way you do this if you just want to do it at home like this in this book it says uh this is the doctor writing it he says when i had pneumonia i took 2000 milligrams of vitamin c every six minutes Every six minutes, 2,000 milligrams. That's two grams. My oral, right, by mouth, daily dose was over 100,000 milligrams. Right? Or 100 grams. Which is, that's a, that's a very high dose. We would call that a mega dose. 
a giant dose, <laughs> a giant amount of vitamin C. And then here's what happened. Fever, cough, and other symptoms were reduced in just hours. And I had a complete recovery in just a few days. If you get bronchitis, which is an infection of your lungs, it clears up even faster. That performance, in other words, that performance of doing following this method is at least, at least as good as any drug that you'll get from the medical industry. And the vitamin is safer and cheaper. So there you go. Now, that'll give you probably some bad diarrhea <laughs> if you follow that. But that's a pretty small thing to do. I mean, it's a small side effect. It's not dangerous. So you can start learning about these kinds of things. And there are lots of things like this that you can do that are very uh, inexpensive if you do find yourself getting some kind of uh, sickness. So again, it's, it's, a, it's the mindset that's important. You have the mindset that, no, it's not some doctor somewhere, not some hospital, not some drug company. They're not responsible for your health. They're not responsible for making you better. You are. You are responsible for your health. You're responsible for figuring out how to stay healthy. And if you get sick, how to heal yourself. And there, and you can go online and you can read books and you can experiment with yourself and you can try all these different things and you can learn how to be your own doctor, essentially, healing yourself. Uh, you know, the next thing that you can... Um, think about in terms of being responsible for your life would be your own personal safety. People have the idea that the police are there to protect you. They're not. The police cannot and will not protect you. They will not protect you. The police will not save you. That's just the truth. You, only you are responsible for saving yourself, protecting yourself from attack, from physical harm, and people you care about. Only you. If you live in a country with a gun, then you, where guns are legal, then you should probably buy a gun if you're worried about it and learn to shoot it. Uh, you, you should learn some kind of uh, self-defense, basic self-defense method. Keep yourself in decent physical shape. You know, whatever it is. But it's, it's your decision how to do it. But the truth is, the police will not save you. And if you think about it, logically, they can't really save you. How could they? They can't be everywhere at once, okay? So if, you're, if someone breaks into your house with the idea of hurting you, for example, you can call the police, but <laughs> it's going to be, by the time they get there, it's going to be too late. If that person's trying to hurt, hurt, hurt you or kill you, you're going to be dead or hurt, or you're going to fight and you're going to save yourself. But either way, the police aren't going to save you. I'll tell you what the police do. The police come after something happens, usually. They usually come after something happens, and then they fill out paperwork, which maybe they catch the person. Maybe the person goes to jail. Often they don't, but it doesn't matter to you, right? I mean, it's, all, it's already over. Whatever happened, happened. So you have to rely on yourself. Only you can protect yourself. In most situations, you might occasionally get super lucky and there happens to be a police a policeman there right when you need them but almost never going to happen i mean criminals um aren't totally stupid they look around and if they don't do something where the police can see them so if you get attacked if you get robbed if you get someone tries to hurt you it's up to you just to protect yourself you are responsible for that and so many people think oh it's the police that'll do it oh the police will protect me no they won't that's a dangerous attitude to have because they, they won't and they can't. So it's just, I think, you know, people are afraid of this idea of that being totally responsible because uh, it requires some extra work. It requires some effort, right? You've got to learn how to defend yourself physically. You've got to learn how to take care of yourself, your health. You've got to learn how to, you know, homeschool, figure out how you want to do it. Although, like I said yesterday, it's, it's pretty easy. But still, all these things you have to figure out. You can find coaches, you can find books, you can find 
websites, you can just experiment, whatever you need to do, but you are responsible, just like your education, your education, your own education, right? You figured this out with English, that, you know, just going to a classroom and sitting there thinking the teacher is going to, you know, make you a good English speaker. I think you all, you figured that out, that that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? You're responsible. You are the master of your own learning. But see, that's also good news because it means you have the power. It's only the reason people feel powerless is because they're giving their power away. They're giving it away to schools, giving it away to the government, giving it away to the police. People give away their power to doctors, to hospitals. And then they're afraid because they realize that now they're weak. But when you take responsibility for more and more and more and more and more areas in your life, um, it is a little extra work maybe, uh, but on the positive side, you feel more and more and more power. You get more and more uh, good results. And in general, you get happier and happier and happier. So just my quick message for today. I probably have a short show today. So I'll finish there. We'll go to quickly go to questions and comments. And that's it. Okay, so first, uh, quickly, the member comments, the supporting. These are supporting members on YouTube, which I appreciate. Thank you. Vladislav says, the question is where to find 200 grams of vitamin C? Uh, Amazon. Uh, it's easy. It's all it, 200 grams of vitamin C is uh, just you just buy a few bottles. It's 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 cheap. Vitamin C is cheap. The other thing you can do is just buy giant bags of it. Uh, you can there's a uh, um, bulk supplements b u l k bulk supplements dot com. I use them sometimes, or you can just buy like a one kilogram bag of vitamin C, <laughs> you know, just pow straight powder. Um, so yeah, vitamin C is super cheap and it's very, very, very effective against a whole lot of things. It's good to take it uh, preventatively, like just to take it every day. It helps you just avoid getting colds and uh, things like that. And then if you start feeling bad, then you take a large amount. I mean, only if you're, I mean, the, the amount that this guy's talking about, that's a, that's a serious like that's something that's very serious. Pneumonia can kill you. So uh, if you have, it's only if you're facing something like that, or pneumonia or cancer or something very serious, would you do that kind of amount of vitamin C, <laughs> right? Uh, if you just have a cold or a normal flu, you don't quite have to go to that level in my experience. And then one more from Vladislav, and then we'll open, I'll open the comments. A university I studied some martial art called Sambo. I've heard of it. Uh, I wasn't good at it. I was afraid of falling or getting injured another way. I couldn't overcome this fear. Sambo. Is that, is that a Russian one? Is that kind of a Russian mixed martial arts I, is my idea of it? I'm not sure if that's the case. Alana Khan says, interesting. All of your topics are related to ones are related to each other responsibility, flexibility, staying active, always learning. They're tiny pieces of a big picture of a happy and meaningful life. Yes, <laughs> that's my plan. That's what I'm trying to do. This is correct. All right, let's get into the settings. I'll open up the comments to everybody. <laughs> and hi, Kumipon. Hi, Madi. Ilana Khan. Elena. And Ruslan, hi to all of you. What amount of vitamin C do I take? I take probably um, most most days. I take uh, I don't know two to five thousand milligrams a day, just as normal. And then if I uh, if I get sick, like I feel like I'm getting a cold or the flu, I'll probably jump that up to mm, 12 to 20,000 milligrams in a day. Yeah. In that range is what I do. And he says, people used to be responsible at the age of 17 or less. Yeah, we've talked about this topic before. For example, they got married <laughs> at that age. They used to take all the responsibility. Nowadays, people at the age of 30 still think that marriage is like a game. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We have adult babies now. We have a society of adult babies. 
you know, where you can see it on YouTube where you see some like 35 year old man who's still, ah, he's all still super excited about the new Star Wars movie. And he's, he's got, he's not married. He has no children. He's still acting like a little kid. And it's kind of it's sad, it's, isn't it? And um, I'm not even saying, you know, I, I was similar, not, not that bad, <laughs> but uh, you know, like I was 25 years old and still a kid for sure. For sure, I was not responsible, fully responsible in, in, in an adult way. Like, certainly not like my ancestors were. Uh, so, it is sad. And this is part of Brave New World. We kind of, we discussed it when we read Brave New World, in that book club, how, you know, this is part of the plan to make people emotionally like children for their entire lives so that they never fully take responsibility. Because then they're very easy to control. Vladislav says, yes, I think Sambo is Russian. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of it. I've heard it's pretty, uh, if it's what I'm thinking, I've heard it's pretty tough, pretty good. Kind of, a, like I said, a mixed martial art, jujitsu, wrestling type of thing. Uh, generally, I, those are those are quite good. So, uh, the fear of falling. Yeah, you just got to do it. <laughs> you just got to get used to it. That's a great thing about jujitsu. You don't you're not afraid of the ground because uh in judo judo is where you really get taken down a lot uh so i kind of get it if, when you're first getting thrown i did a little judo in when i was in university and uh yeah getting thrown and smashed onto the ground after a, it takes getting used to you have to <laughs> it's not so fun in the beginning Extreme Ownership is the Ultimate Solution. It's a, uh, as says uh, Mahdi. It's a good book by that title, which is similar to what we're talking about, the, the idea of that book. What do I think about Gates and his vaccines? Uh, Gates is, a, is evil. Ah, Vadim confirms Sambo is a Russian kind of wrestling similar to Judo and Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Leonardo Parigi says responsibility is the most useful skill, especially these days. Anyway, I watched the movie Forrest Gump with the movie technique. What do you think of that movie? Uh, it's good, but they, uh, but he speaks in a very weird way. It's not a natural way of speaking, the main character. So for the purpose of learning English, be careful. Don't copy Tom Hanks in that movie because his accent is very strange, right? Hey, Danny, hope to do <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you don't want to talk like that. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> uh, Payam says, I have a back injury. Doctors say I shouldn't. Where, whoops, where'd it go? I shouldn't be doing any martial arts anymore. I'd love to exercise, but I'm confused. Well, you're going to have to figure this out then, aren't you? Right? You've got to be responsible for this decision and you have to figuring it out. If you want to do martial arts and you have a back injury, well, guess what? Now you have to figure out how to heal that back injury and get your back strong enough to handle martial arts again, probably much stronger than it was. So it doesn't get injured again. The doctors aren't going to help you do that. They don't know. They're just going to give you drugs until you don't do it anymore. So, uh, I, you know, I, I can't be responsible. I have no idea what your in situation is. So guess what? Now you've got to start going out there. Here's the good news. There are probably people, <laughs> I, I, I'm 100% certain, there are many, many people in the world who have been in your situation, who had, who were martial artists, serious martial artists of, of various kinds, and who had back injuries, and who were told they could never do it again, and yet they figured out how to do it. So, and some of them probably have written books or articles or have YouTube videos or bit shoot videos or something. So you're going to have to start digging and looking and finding people who have done what you want to do and then figure it out. That's, that's the key, right? That's how you do it. 
so good luck to you. I, I think you probably can do it, I, but you're gonna. And the doctors aren't gonna help you do that. So this is a good ca- good uh, example of where uh, you can't. You've got to be responsible. The doctors aren't responsible for this, right? If you want to get back to training again, you have to figure it out. It might include certain kinds of therapies. It might include certain kinds of exercising. It might include changes in your diet. I don't know, but you've got to figure it out. What about lemons, says Victoria? They're good for everything. Lemon's a big pill. Lemons are great for lots of things. That's true. And the lemon, even the peels are, are good for you. Thanks, Siracha. Siracha says this topic is good for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, Carlos says YouTube is going to ban all videos that make harmful suggestions that go against the World Health Organization. YouTube is controlled by, you know, the deep state. YouTube is evil. YouTube lies. They're pushing lies. YouTube, uh, there's lots of censorship. So (laughs) don't trust anything, you know, that the official YouTube people are pushing. If YouTube is, is supporting the World Health Organization, that tells you that the World Health Organization is, is bad. How to, to teach children to take responsibility, ask Ilana Khan. You have to give it to them. You have to kind of buy, they have to take responsibility by, you, you give them responsibility for things, right? Because responsibility has rewards too. So children are going to ask for things, right? They, they, they always want more freedom, more freedom to do more things. So don't just give it to them. Say, okay, well, you could have more freedom to do something, but you also have to show the responsibility that you can handle it, right? You have to, so like, you know, I don't know. If you have a specific question, go ahead and you can follow up. But uh, that's generally, I think, how to do it. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Oh, and he says, I think respons- taking responsibility is when you reach a great level of red pill. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's kind of it may, it's kind of a step-by-step thing. You can take more responsibility, more, take more, take more, take more, right? Don't, I don't know, some people are afraid of it, but it actually gives you power when you do this. Mingma says, when I was in school, my teacher used to smoke, though he taught us don't smoke. Uh, ask if if you teach in that way, what is your responsibility to remove smoking? Are you asking me personally or more or generally? I don't I don't really lecture people about smoking or not. <laughs> it's not a major issue for me. Same, same with drinking. So I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, like Ruslan says, I grew up in a village in Moldova. We grew 100% of our own food. I killed pigs, chickens, and milk cows. Yeah, right. And so then you you know, you know the reality of it. Even growing plants... You know, sometimes people have to kill animals to protect their plants because the animals are coming to eat their plants, right? And uh, or you got to figure out ways to get rid of them. And uh, but anyway, you know, you, it it connects you to the reality of food, right? Because what what most people do now, including me, is we go to a store and it's everything's in a little package, and we are completely separated from the reality of food and how it's grown, 
and what's involved and how tough it can be to, to grow it. Uh, so pe people don't respect farmers enough. Yeah, Bottom's got a good, another good example, someone who, an extreme <laughs> example. For the ones who, who have injuries and told that they can't do anything, read the book by David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. Or just type in, hey, David, I have joint injuries. That's your answer. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's a, there's a great example. That guy's super, super tough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a guy who took extreme responsibility. Yeah, I have to kind of jump to the bottom and go backwards. Let's see. Oh, big audience today. Oh, yeah, I guess we do have a big audience. Interesting. Paula says, you can't expect anything from the government. They hurt us, and later they sell us the cure. Yep. Although I'd say that's the drug companies. <laughs> Especially do that. Self-reliance is power, says Ruslan. Yeah, discipline is self-discipline, self-reliance. Taking responsibility gives you greater and greater strength and power in your life, and therefore happiness. Because, you know, when you feel weak... Then you're scared, and then uh, you tend to be less happy. Okay. And he says, fasting. Oh, there's another one. Fasting. In terms of your health, uh, fasting is incredibly powerful for healing thing, any kind of problem. So that's another thing you can do uh, very quickly. Is uh, And that's something I'll usually do too. If I start getting a cold, if I feel like I'm getting a cold or the flu, is immediately start fasting. You could do a water fast, you know, a salt water fast. Or if you're really serious, do a dry fast. And uh, that'll help a lot, too. And that's free. Completely free. Just stop eating. <laughs> and it, it, just go several days if you need to. And your body will start to heal itself. So this is another one you can do. You could do a bunch of vit vitamin C on the first day and or the second couple of days and then do a fast. There are lots of different things you could do if you get sick. Uh, many things you can do on your own. Vitamin D, large doses of vitamin D, large doses of vitamin C, fasting. I mean, those are three, my three favorites right there because they're so simple. They're so, so, so simple, those three. And they, they work very effectively. Okay. Sorry, guys. My, my comments are jumping around on my screen here. So this is the YouTube problem. Just get, that's why it takes me a little longer to read these. Okay. Let's see. Um... The, the great tragedy of the average man is that he goes to his grave with his music still in him. Brian Tracy. This is from Ahmad. Uh, right. Meaning his goals, his uh, accomplishments. So the people are afraid. to, Because see, that's the thing. To, to accomplish things, to get good things in your life, 
you have to be responsible. If you avoid responsibility, you also avoid success. You also avoid great happiness. That's the, the tragedy of it. Yeah, maybe you can be a little lazier or, you know, not think about certain things, but then you also miss out on all the great things too. asking me like these conspiracy theories i have no idea i think communist china may have started world may start world war three by spreading the coronavirus to get rid of the world superpower what do you think i don't know i don't think there's going to be world war three i don't need <laughs> that part i don't think you need to worry about it. relax don't, don't worry about it as for what how this thing actually started and the whole details of it nobody knows right now well, maybe some know but you and i don't know so there's no point in getting too worried about it yet. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, Olga, good point. You always need to have a little faith that you're healing. It's very important. Yes, also true. The power of, the, of your mind is, uh, you know, don't underestimate that also. That's a good point. You're right. Ah, okay. Osman says, I'm fasting right now. Ramadan, uh, feeling better. Can I, I wonder if I can take vitamin C in the night because I'm fasting day. Yeah. Yes. Right. Exactly. So you eat, you can eat at night. So take vitamin C at night. Yes, you can do that. Absolutely. That'll increase the power of that fast. So when you're the, uh, on your eating times, which for Ramadan is at night, you can dose up on some vitamin C, take extra vitamin C. And in the day you're fasting, your body's going to be healing especially with a dry fast. It's a nice little combination. Yes, and don't overeat at night. As he says, how are your grandparents? Are they still alive? Uh, I have two grandmothers who are still alive. One's 100 years old and the other one's 95. Those are my grandmothers. <laughs> yeah, cool. Leonardo says, uh, this, you know, this time I like health. Regarding countryside and gardening, I have a couple of trees in which uh, the harvest is perennial, meaning always. Many, many benefits, including health benefits. Right. You know, people pay a lot of money for organic and no pesticides, but when you grow it yourself, then you know. Right. It's, it's it's not only the uh, that there aren't chemicals, but also that the soil is good. You can you can take responsibility for all that and you can get uh, a very high, a much, much higher level of nutrition from your food when you're growing it yourself, because uh, now you are responsible. You don't need to trust some huge company. That's a good point. Yes. Okay, a couple more, and then I'm going to go. Funda says, AJ, I wish I can be relaxed like you in this virus situation. Just relax. There's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. And it's basically over. We're hitting May is coming up. Uh, you're going to see already, you know, lots of places are already talking about. They're starting to going to start opening up again in, in May. Some of the places that are shut down. Uh, hot weather's coming. It's done, guys. It's finished. Even if you think it's real, it's finished. <laughs> so just relax. And you're not, you know, you guys aren't 90 years old and you're not overweight, diabetic 90-year-olds. I think you're okay. Chill out. Relax. <laughs> David says, do you recommend, oh, I recommend the book 12... Rules for Life from Jordan Peterson. Yeah, um, and I'm a fan of homeschooling. I'm not I'm not a fan of his, but um, it's okay if you are. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Sasha says, what do you think about coffee? <laughs> I've been up and down with coffee. Like, you know, uh, I like coffee. And uh, and then I was, uh, you know, I listened to Tony Robbins. He's really against coffee, right? And so Tony had uh, like this whole big speech about coffee and how it's bad for you. So, you know, he convinced me for a while. And then I, but then I read other things you know, and that, oh, coffee's good for you. It has really high in antioxidants, David Wolf, some others. So then I, oh, let's change mine again. And then now I just like, you know what? It's not, the, I don't know if it's good for you. I don't think it's very bad for you. I think just doing it in moderation is the key thing. Don't drink a bunch, you know, several pots a day. I drink coffee. But it's up to you. But I, I, I'm not too worried about coffee. DKXF says, are you staying home or hanging out like before? I'm, my life has not changed at all. <laughs> I just, uh, I go for a walk every day. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I haven't, I was not hanging out in restaurants anyway because of the babies. So that, that, that doesn't change. Uh, yeah, my life's basically the same. Yeah, cool. Ruslan says, see, this is about, here's we're taking responsibility. To strengthen my immune system, I do weekly 30-hour dry fast combined with throwing three buckets of ice cold water on top of my head. Yeah, that cold therapy stuff. You know, people do um, cold showers. People do cold baths. You know, there's that whole Wim Hof, uh, the ice, check him out. Wim, Wim Hof, he's got some interesting books. Um and then, of course, yeah, a 30-hour dry fast every week. That's really great. That's fantastic. Good for you. Vladislav says, even 90-year-olds are likely to survive the coronavirus if they are healthy. Yep. Yeah, some people are saying they like coffee or some people like tea more. Yes, indeed. Okay, so I think that's the key thing. And I, and I think that here's the, the thing, you know, kind of people, some people have mentioned, you know, the virus or other things. And you, again, and it's the same with homeschooling. It's the same with uh, a lot of these topics that the more you take responsibility for that area of your life, the more then you you learn more about that topic about that area of your life you get more skill in that area of your life you become stronger in that area of life and therefore you become much 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 less afraid because you know you're not you're not hoping someone will save you you're not hoping someone will save your health you're not hoping someone will give your child a good education you're not hoping someone will you know protect you 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 know that you can do it yourself. You can do it well. So the fear kind of goes away. And so that's it's a it's a very good um, you know very good uh, benefit of taking responsibility. Okay, a couple more, and then time to go. Vivek, what's the your opinion about the current American situation. I'm not sure which situation you're talking about. I guess you're talking about uh, the, the lockdown. Uh, I'm glad it's ending. Americans always... Americans are very uh, easily controlled by the TV. So they way overreact to things if the TV is pushing something. It's sort of... I just don't understand how they do it or why they do it, but they do. So anyway, I'm glad that this is... It's, it's ending. Uh, I know like... My home state of Georgia is opening everything back up starting um, next week, I think. So that's good. You're going to see it'll, you know, a lot of things in America that will be different state by state, different sometimes in certain certain laws that are different in different states. And this in this case, you're going to see, I think, different states taking a different approach.
Yeah, Uvadim, this is another way to say take responsibility. It's important to blame only yourself. Many people blame parents, their country, their genetics, or something else. Right. I mean, blaming yourself, me, that's part of taking responsibility, and that's why people maybe don't like it, because it means you have to accept your mistakes. You don't blame other people. You have to accept the bad results that you get sometimes, and you will get bad results, and you will fail sometimes, and it's not someone, you don't blame others. You say, no, that's me. I, that was my decision. Uh, that was my mistake. And you will. You'll, you're just going to be ignorant sometimes. You'll, do, you'll make mistakes because you just don't know. Uh, you'll make mistakes for many different reasons. And then that you try to learn from them and keep going. Flatasol says, most Americans are super crazy. Yeah. And Olga says, like Russians. Probably a different kind of craziness. <laughs> Bertolin says, yeah, people debating coffee now. Coughing can cause anxiety levels to go up. Yes, it's true. And some anxious people. This is why, you know, again, you have to take responsibility. And you don't just listen to others, right? So you're going to, right, you're going to hear it. Coffee is a great example of this. Because you're going to, you, you will hear so many different arguments around coffee from, you know, oh, it's, it's super high in antioxidants. It's really good for you. And it, it's, uh, it protects your brain against Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, apparently. Uh, oh, it can cause anxiety. Uh, it can make your body more acidic. So anyway, all these things might be true. Some might be true. Uh, it probably, again, it, it also varies by person. You know, some people can handle it and some people can't. So it's just one of these things, a great example of you just have to decide yourself, right? You just decide yourself, you know, and, uh, can you handle coffee? Does it does it seem like your body's okay with it? Is there certain amounts? Like I can handle it, but not too much. Um, if I drink too much, then I have trouble sleeping uh, and other pro and anxiety. Not anxiety, but I just get kind of too much <laughs> tension. Uh, so anyway, so you just take responsibility for it and decide for yourself. Yeah, like Celso Julio says, uh, you know, yes, I agree. We're responsible for our own lives. But remember, the good or bad consequences are also ours, too. Right. You have to accept the consequences then. That's the part a lot of people don't like. <laughs> Rusland says, I'm talking about the virus again. Blue states, meaning the coastal states in America, pretend to have more cases of corona. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff happening with the, the numbers. A lot of dishonest stuff happening, I believe. My opinion. Okay. I think that's it, guys. All right. That's all for today. So pretty simple show, really. Very simple message for today. But uh, sometimes simple is powerful. And if you have an area of your life where you're stressed out, this is a good first step sometimes is just to think, ask yourself, be honest. Am, am I being responsible? Like if your health is stressing you out, like you're so worried about what's happening right now, then you have to ask yourself why. Am I, and then ask yourself this question, am I really responsible for my own health, for example? Or do I just, I'm just afraid, and if I get sick, I, I just expect to go to a doctor and hope they'll save me. Well, then, of course, you're going to be afraid. But if you are really responsible for your own health, right, and... There are many ways to do it, but you, you figure you figured out a lot of different ways where you're pretty confident that you know how to keep yourself healthy, 
You know how if you get sick, you know things you can do to, to get better. And you also just know what to do to keep, keep yourself generally healthy and avoid getting sick. Then you have no fear. Then your fear goes away or you have very little fear right? And it's, it's just true in so many areas of life. It's the same thing with homeschooling. People are afraid of homeschooling because they don't know anything about it because they just send their child off to school and they, they don't even know what's going on there. And, uh, but if you take responsibility for it, you look into it, read a couple books about homeschooling, try it out a little bit, you realize, oh, it's not that bad. It's pretty easy to do. And, uh, and then the fear goes away. And then you realize, ah, oh, there's no reason to be afraid of this. It's, it's actually very nice, right? So I think in a lot of areas of life, when you get, if you get stressed out, if you get worried, just take more responsibility. Don't run away from that problem. Instead, take more responsibility for that part of your life, learning about it, trying things, failing, getting better, and then you'll find the stress will go away. All right, then. Lots of love to you. As always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit. See you next time.